I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2004. Um, in June, I had a mastectomy, and so I've been working with the oncology department here at Swedish um, at First Hill. I hate to be so dramatic as to say that it saved my life, but it was so wonderful to have a place to go that I knew that somebody actually really cared about me. And that is probably the biggest thing that I have been so appreciative at Swedish, is to know that people care. In 1932, Swedish opened the first cancer care center west of the Mississippi. Today, more than 70 years later, the Swedish Cancer Institute has grown into the Northwest's largest cancer care program, offering patients the most extensive range of services and expertise in the region. The Swedish Cancer Institute includes leading cancer specialists, a broad range of treatment options, state-of-the-art facilities and equipment, and cancer care that is as personal as it is progressive and comprehensive. Uh, the American Cancer Society and Swedish Cancer Institute are, are partnering to bring you immediate support at the time of your diagnosis and treatment. Uh, as your cancer resource navigator, I'm dedicated to assisting new, newly diagnosed patients and their families and caregivers by helping them navigate through the medical system and by connecting them with information, resources, and referrals. Um, this is so that you can be fully informed of all of your options and proactive throughout your cancer journey. I give accurate, up-to-date information from a trusted source, your American Cancer Society. Um, I can help regarding integrated care programs, like referring to support groups, naturopathic services, massage therapy, art therapy. Um, and I'm, I'm just here if somebody wants to talk, providing uh, emotional support after cancer diagnosis. Or if you just want to learn more, I'm available to meet you where it's most convenient, in waiting areas, in my office. Um, I have local resource information right here at Swedish Cancer Institute and in your community. The American Cancer Society also has a number of programs uh, for your well-being, like uh, transportation programs, lodging, wig and gift items. We have free literature on coping and treatment types, nutrition. Um, I can assist by identifying activities that increase and enhance your quality of life. Um, we get a lot of patients who are interested in complementary care, integrative care, and the studies have shown that probably a large number of patients are, are seeing other kinds of providers as they go through their, their treatment for breast cancer. And what's nice now is that patients are actually telling us about it, whereas some years ago they weren't telling us that they were seeing other providers. One of the things that I think is so essential about having the services offered here under the umbrella of the Cancer Institute is it allows us to get the very best providers to see our patients. And particularly when we start to branch out into things like naturopathic services, there's such a wide variety in the training of naturopathic physicians. Having physicians contracted with us and here in the, in the uh, Cancer Institute allows us to be assured of the quality of the physicians and to be assured of their interest and knowledge about treating cancer patients. At the Swedish Cancer Institute, patients have the opportunity to combine the very best of conventional cancer therapy with the very best of natural medicine. Let me tell you about naturopathic medicine and naturopathic services. We provide treatments such as botanical medicine, herbs, clinical nutrition, mind-body strategies, and a host of other natural treatments to accomplish a number of objectives for the cancer survivor. Number one, we want to keep you as strong and healthy as possible during treatment. Secondly, we make certain that nothing happens in the way of other treatments to interfere with the conventional cancer treatments that you're receiving here at the Cancer Institute. Thirdly, we pay a lot of attention to making certain that we provide everything your body needs to fight this disease and keep you once again as strong, healthy, and functional as possible. The purchase of a cooktop with donated funds from the Eagles fraternity to facilitate nutritional education program. At the Swedish Cancer Institute, we offer a series of cooking classes utilizing our cooktop. The classes address common nutrition-related concerns of people receiving cancer treatment, and we distribute samples of foods that are prepared during their class. Examples of the classes include prevention of weight loss, which is one of the most common side effects of any cancer treatment. Another class addresses weight gain during treatment and offers tips on how to minimize it. 
And finally, another class provides orientation to the kitchen for those inexperienced with cooking. These classes are offered free of charge and they all involve a cooking demonstration with recipe sampling and are available for patients or their caregivers to attend. Patients have the ability to schedule an appointment with one of the registered dietitians of the Nutrition Care Clinic. The dietitians provide individualized nutrition counseling addressing a variety of concerns. Patients can be seen as an outpatient through the hospital or they can be seen by appointment at our office within the Swedish Cancer Institute. We can discuss healthy eating in general, offer suggestions for managing nutrition related side effects of treatment or address any other nutritional concern. There are also a multitude of books available for loan through the Cancer Institute's Education Center. Several of these books address diet and nutrition and its role in cancer prevention, treatment, and recovery. Here at the Swedish Cancer Institute, I provide people who have been diagnosed with cancer instruction in mindfulness meditation in a two to four class series. This program introduces uh, people to the basics of meditation. And you might wonder how can this help someone with cancer. Meditation can be very valuable in that it provides people with a sense of inner stability and inner calm even in the midst of great turmoil. It's also a training to let the mind rest in the present moment. And so often when people are diagnosed with a major medical condition such as cancer, there are plenty of worries about what's going to happen next. It can be very valuable to have a skill that brings your awareness just back to the here and now and enables you to, to live the present moment or live in the present moment, which is the moment we have for experiencing life itself. One of the things that's been nice for me that Swedish has provided is access to a lot of different services. Because I needed to do something partially to distract, but partially because I needed to get through the cancer experience. So I did the, like, the look good, feel better, and I, there was another one. And, and uh, one of the things that's been really special to me has been doing the art therapy. And at first, I have to admit, I thought it would be really silly because I thought, first of all, I'm not an artist, I don't know what I'm doing, and, um, and it turned out I didn't need to know what I was doing because it was really about expressing a lot about what I felt. In here, we do a variety of things. Uh, first of all, I should say it's a confidential process uh, since art therapy is a marriage between counseling and creative arts. It is a process for ex where people may examine and express feelings. Uh, it's also a process where people may decide to look for solutions. They may decide to examine family relationships or support system uh, concerns. Or they may look at the spiritual component of their life. Just the full range of issues that, that may come up when one is ill. No matter what kind of treatment a cancer patient receives, the fight against cancer is more than a physical challenge. It impacts everything from emotional well-being to financial stability. That's why at the Swedish Cancer Institute, integration of services for the mind, body, and spirit are so important. As chaplains here at Swedish Medical Center, we provide a number of specific services for patients. For example, we have chapel services several times a week in the hospital chapel. Those services are ecumenical across all faith traditions. We also are, are able to provide specific services for different faith traditions. The most common one is, is prayer for those only that request it. We also, though, can provide certain rituals for patients of various faith traditions. The most common one is communion, which is given to sacramental Christians um, when they request it. Sometimes we are asked to provide services for uh, patients of faith traditions that uh, we do not have a chaplain available, and we are uh, willing and, and often um, go outside of the hospital to find uh, clerics or religious leaders from other faith traditions to, to work with that patient. I'm a board certified music therapist and I also hold a Master of Social Work degree. 
Many times people will come up to me and they'll say, well, what is music therapy? The best definition that I've been able to come up with is that music therapy is the planned use of music-based interventions which occur within the relationship between the therapist and the patient to meet, meet whatever kind of goals that they have that they want to address. I know that one of the things that is just wonderful for me as a practitioner and working with people with using music is that the brain, our brain has a different way of processing music than it does ordinary language. So that for people who have a hard time expressing themselves or are even having a hard time coming up with identifying what their feelings or thoughts are, music can help bypass some of the logical thinking and go right to the emotional and memory centers of the brain. It's just that our, our brains are hardwired that way. The way that we perceive sound, it goes through our auditory nerve, connects to our ninth cranial nerve, which then spreads across the brain and really bypasses more those frontal lobe advanced process areas. The other part of the brain that music stimulates right away are the centers that regulate physiological functions like heart rate, pulse, blood pressure, so that's why music can be really effective with people if they're trying to look at some of those other ways of regulating their body and how it responds. Both the social workers here, Leah and Susan, I have to say are absolutely fantastic. I love them both and they have been so supportive and I have cried in their arms enough too and it's really neat to uh, be in the hallway or be in the elevator and run into them and just get a big hug. So, and I found that all through Swedish, and it's one of the reasons that I'm so glad I'm here. I like to think that we have a very complete integrated program here at the Cancer Institute, so that all patients who are seen at the Cancer Institute do have an opportunity to speak with a counselor or uh, a social worker with regard to any number of issues that they might want to talk about. Uh, we primarily assist with financial counseling, adjustment issues around the cancer, and information for patients and families. Psychiatric oncology, sometimes called psycho-oncology, is a group of professionals here at the Cancer Institute devoted to helping you through the cancer experience. Starting with the diagnosis, going through treatment, and through every phase of recovery, we want to help you with the many challenges that cancer brings challenges to your sense of who you are and what your life is all about, the questions that come up when you can't be the person you usually are and have to find new ways. Our goal is to make sure that the entire person is considered by the treatment team every step of the way. We want to know how you're doing. We want to know if you've had a fever. We want to know your white blood cell count. And we want to know how you're feeling inside how you're coping with the challenges that cancer diagnosis and treatment brings. When I was first diagnosed, I also was able to pick up a little basket that had a lot of little goodies in there. But downstairs, one of the things they also have are these hats. And I have been able to get, and the free hats, you know, because people like to knit hats that, that um, uh, cancer patients can have when they're bald. Hi, I'm Christine Smith. I am the founder of Northwest Hope and Healing Foundation, an organization that was founded in 2000, shortly after I was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 32. My boys were just two and three years old at the time, and needless to say, I was devastated. I had no idea what the future would hold. It was a very traumatic time, and I was very afraid. Fortunately, I was treated at a fabulous medical facility. I was treated here at Swedish, and I had family and friends that were more than supportive. They were helping with the children. They were driving me to appointments. They were everything that I could have asked for. And to this day, I'm very appreciative of that. These healing baskets are distributed to hundreds of newly diagnosed cancer patients here at Swedish and at other Swedish campuses. They are filled with items of comfort and hope. We have sleeping hats. We have candies. We have eye pillows that help soothe and comfort the patient. There's soaps and lotions. These baskets are assembled by 
caring volunteers, there's many homemade items, and something tangible like the healing basket can start people off on their five minutes of hope that I felt I needed back in 2000. Northwest Hope and Healing also provides many other valuable services. We provide childcare while a patient is receiving cancer treatment. We provide meal services. We provide family counseling, toys for children, and house cleaning. Cancer affects more than just the cancer patient. It affects their entire family. Key examples of the Swedish Cancer Institute's recent commitment and leadership in integrated cancer care services include national recognition of the program as a leader in the field with invitations to Swedish Cancer Institute leadership to speak at national conferences on the topic, ever increasing numbers of classes and programs to help patients and families improve their quality of life during cancer, a new quarterly newsletter that features articles addressing quality of life topics for patients and families as well as listings of classes, programs, and events full-time massage therapy services offered by the Swedish Cancer Institute's First Hill Campus, comprehensive informational resources available through the Swedish Cancer Institute Cancer Education Center, continued collaboration with community organizations such as Cancer Lifeline, Gilda's Club, and the American Cancer Society. The Cancer Education Center is a large-scale, comprehensive information resource for patients, staff, and community members. Located within the Swedish Cancer Institute, it is staffed by health education experts and seasoned volunteers. Our center provides on-site and free-of-charge links to a wealth of information and support services. We have a large collection of complimentary brochures on specific cancers. Other topics include treatment, nutrition, support, and prevention. The center has computer stations with direct access to the internet. We offer complimentary literature searches. Visitors to our center can read and send email. One special feature is Swedish Cancer Institute's partnership with CancerConsultants.com, the provider of our online cancer education center. CancerConsultants.com offers in-depth cancer information, access to a drug dictionary, and more. We offer a library of books, videos, cassette tapes, and CDs. All items may be borrowed. Perhaps you've been diagnosed with cancer, or maybe you have cancer in your family. You'll naturally start to wonder about the rest of your family. What about my children? What about my brothers and sisters and their children? Are they at risk for cancer? Should I have genetic testing? How is it going to help me? How is it going to help my family? The Cancer Institute has established a hereditary cancer clinic to help you answer these important and complicated questions. The clinic is staffed by me, a board-certified genetic counselor with more than 20 years of experience. We're health professionals with specialized training in genetics, medicine, and counseling. And I work closely with oncologists like Dr. Paley and Dr. Rin and other specialists who have a strong interest in hereditary cancers. Many people think of genetic testing as a complicated matter. In fact, the test itself only involves a blood draw. But deciding about the test, that's where it gets complex. Is the test right for me? How accurate is the testing? How will it affect my med medical care? Will insurance cover my test? Will the test results affect my ability to get health insurance? At the Hereditary Cancer Clinic, we review your family history and your medical history and determine which test, if any, is best for you. Of course, not everybody decides to have testing, and testing isn't appropriate for everyone with cancer. We'll work with you to try to arrive at a decision about testing that's best for you and for your family, and that fits your medical and personal situation. Some people will learn that even if they have a family history of cancer, they may not be at particularly high risk. Others may learn from the results that they are at a higher risk for cancer, but learn about ways that cancer can be detected, sometimes prevented altogether. If your family has a predisposition towards cancer, all the care your family might need, testing, counseling, screening, treatment, surgery, it's all readily available at the Cancer Institute. Uh, one of the things about uh, cancer is patients come to the Cancer Institute with lots of different ideas about cancer, a lot of uh, history about cancer. They've heard a lot of different things. Uh, and one thing about cancer is it strikes everybody. Uh, people are very, very different. One of the nice things about integrated care is that we can really serve people with what they want. 
Uh, if someone has a great interest in naturopathic medicine or massage or music therapy, we can really offer that to them. Uh, if people are not interested in that but want to know what's available, we can do that also. So one of the nice things is, is that we have this all available and patients can really use it as they really see fit to integrate into their health care. At the Swedish Cancer Institute, our patients benefit from an integrated approach to care. This approach takes into account not only a person's physical well-being, but his or her emotional and spiritual needs too. From prevention and early detection treatments and complementary therapies to supportive and palliative care, the Swedish Cancer Institute is designed to meet the individual needs of each of its patients. Uh, I'm an anesthesiologist who is now working full-time uh, in pain management. I am a certif board certified in uh, anesthesiology and in the anesthesia subspecialty of pain management. I'm also a diplomat of the American Board of Medical Acupuncture and a diplomat of the American Board of Pain Medicine. Uh, and I have uh, in uh, enjoyed very much uh, moving to this area because it's where Many new things are happening and where you can able to use many different systems in integrating the treatment of the patient coming from both east-west and, and finding that it integrates very well with modern medicine. My name is Lori Fronick and I work for Monroe Therapeutic Massage as a massage therapist here at the Swedish Cancer Institute. We provide therapeutic massage for the cancer patients on site here as well as in our clinics around the greater Seattle area. And no matter what stage of healing a patient is in, we can find a way to adapt massage to work for them. The benefits of massage can be physical as well as emotional for the patients. It's a wonderful way to help relieve their stress and anxiety that they're feeling about their disease and the treatments that they're going through. And physically it can help with all kinds of symptoms. Um, some of the side effects they're having, like maybe their fatigue or any discomfort that they have from the position that they need to be in for their treatment, for instance the radiation treatment, or if they've been inpatient and lying in a hospital bed, they can be very uncomfortable. So there are a lot of different ways that massage can be helpful to them. Um, recently I met a uh, patient who has been newly diagnosed with breast cancer. She outlined where she's at in the management of this disease. She's been receiving acupuncture, she's taking yoga programs, she's seen a nutritionist. She is working very hard to deal with this disease as best she can with the tools and the intelligence that she has. It's very common for patients to be involved in uh, alternate therapies um, that are not the traditional medical therapies as they deal with breast cancer. It's important for them to be encouraged to continue that and also as we embrace their uh, approaches to heal themselves we ask them to embrace the traditional approaches that we have to offer. And we can only do this if we're providing the whole care for the whole patient in our institution, and we are. Um, the goal of cancer rehabilitation is to support people in participating as fully as possible in their lives while living with cancer. Um, we know that uh, people are happier when they're more connected with uh, things that they love to do, whether it's activities outside or whether it's uh, spending personal time with family. Um, we know that well-being is conditioned by a person's ability to participate in their lives. So the whole goal of cancer rehabilitation is to allow people to find the, um, to allow people to participate as fully in their lives while living with cancer. The Swedish Cancer Institute will continue to provide a comprehensive, integrated program that promotes access to care, biomedical, palliative, supportive, and complementary for each individual patient, helping to heal the mind, body, and spirit. You know, another thing has been my breast cancer support group um, that Swedish has, and I've been to other support groups, and I have to say that I love uh, mine the most. Of all that I tried out, I ended up selecting the one as Swedish, and there was a program, uh, an educational program for 10 weeks that I needed to go through, and then I got to go into a level two support group. One of the reasons that I'm so glad I'm here. So I had a chance to go, you know, elsewhere, and I interviewed doctors 
And after I did my interviewing, I ended up choosing Swedish. So I love Swedish. <laughs> I do. <laughs>